Tony Wilson, the man who arguably started the cultural regeneration of Manchester with a legendary Hacienda Club and Factory Records, has died tonight at the age of 57. He transformed nightlife and the music scene in the city in the 1980s and signed New Order and the Happy Mondays at a time when the music business was heavily centred in London. All through his life, too, he had a parallel career as a TV and radio presenter. Well, in a moment, his friends, the factory designer Peter Saville and music critic and writer Paul Morley and his former Granada colleague Richard Maidley and Steve Morris from New Order will be talking about the extraordinary force that was Tony Wilson. But first, here's Steve Smith, who interviewed him two months ago. I think Tony is one of those people who kind of uh, invented his own film in which to live. What do a lot of ignorant people do but go, oh, there's that wanker off telly? You know, it, basically, because they haven't got anything... You have got nothing up there. You're the back, sir, you. Go on, now wait till you get the mic on you and be quiet, please, in the box. You, sir. He was a music mogul who famously made no money out of it. A professional motor mouth and a telly institution in his native northwest. <laughs> his name was Anthony H. Wilson, also known as Tony and indeed Toe. He was the flamboyant founder of Factory Records, home to Joy Division, New Order, and the Happy Mondays. I've never found musicians difficult until afterwards. And afterwards you realise what tosses they are. Um, but the fact that without them we, we wouldn't want to live, would we, without those great songs. Did you go and see him and, and give him a tape, or how did it all start? We didn't give him a tape, no. Um, I used to drop off weed for him. He always had this thing uh, that I didn't like him, but it wasn't true at all, you know. This is very possibly the late Tony Wilson for Granada Reports. Wilson's double life as music scenester and telepresenter was turned into a film starring his fellow Mancunians, including Steve Coogan. There's a bar by fence. No! People have treated me with contempt. Quite rightly, I'm a TV presenter, I'm a big head, f*** you, Wilson. So I get that all the time. But Wilson was diagnosed with cancer last year and claimed he had to get used to people being nice to him. Suddenly, I'm dying of cancer. Everyone loves you. If you ever worry about people hating you, just get cancer, it's fantastic. People are so concerned. So now everyone loves me, it's like, oh, Toe, are you all right, are you all right? I'm going, yeah, f off. It's like, yes, I'm fine, thank you. In the Northwest, it rains and it rains and it rains. And yet we managed to produce the Industrial Revolution, the trade union movement, the Communist Manifesto, and even the goddamn computer. And down south, where the sun never sets, you took all our money and um, what did you produce? Chaz and f***ing Dave. I, I used to joke in my early 50s that I'd had such a fantastic life, I'd be happy to die. And then suddenly, I find some other reasons for living and get ex just like get excited again about life, it comes along. I was annoyed with my own presumption for thinking I'd be happy to die. Tony Wilson talking to Steve Miss. Well, first of all, Paul Murley, Morley, as many myths as, as as many realities exist for Tony Wilson. Well, I think everybody, everybody, and we'll find that here, everybody had a different version yeah. of Tony because he played to who he was talking to. I have yeah. my own version because, um, you know, I started out as a writer and very early on, I mean, it's the great William Gibson quote about seeing the future before it's distributed. He said to me, you are a great writer <laughs> and I want you here around me to chronicle these adventures. And I didn't believe him. I didn't believe a lot of things he said because it all seemed so preposterous, the way he would remake and remodel Manchester, the way that he would, mm -hmm. you know, become more than what he was at the time, which was this rather bizarre television presenter. Eventually, everything he said would become true and he became like this weird metaphysical mayor of Manchester. Mm -hmm. And everything he said would happen, he kind of made happen. He was like a historian before it happened. But everybody has a different view of him. And I think a lot of it was coloured very early on by the fact that he started as a light entertainer. 
so we never really trusted him. And only now that he's died can we begin to work out who the hell and what the hell he actually was. Because on one hand, he had this anarchic, revolutionary side to him. On the other hand, he was a little bit of a Richard Maidley. So yeah, it was well, a kind of weird, weird kind of hybrid. And uh, Richard Maidley, you, you, <laughs> yeah, you, 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 what was he like to work with at Manchester? Well, I joined Granada in 1982, and I joined him and Judy uh, in the lineup presenting Granada Reports. And Tony terrified me because he was the original, I think, deconstructor of television. In fact, he deconstructed World in Action, which he presented for a very brief period, so, so <laughs> conclusively that he was taken off it um, because World in Action wasn't actually built to be deconstructed. He, he just really didn't care what his colleagues or what the viewers thought about him because he had total belief in himself. Mm -hmm. And that was the most charming thing about Tony. So he would get the abuse and, and the kind of uh, vitriol that we all get if, if we're on television, and it would amuse him. It, it would make still him laugh. seems to amuse him that he gets vitriol. People yes. call him a prat well, when he, he, he walks he, around he, Manchester. He's a real enemy of sentimentality in that sense. You know, he doesn't yes. want that lovey doviness. Well, you, you, you knew in a slightly different guise with mm. Factory, which of course you forget how important that was in terms of uh, Manchester and the music scene, how it changed. Mm. But also has the end of this great dry dock this kind yeah. of this place that wasn't a nightclub but was a lot it yeah. was a lot more I mean I mean Tony to me was a an intellectual in popular culture so whether it was television um, or music um, Tony brought a kind of gravitas to it and a sense of importance to it so um, as Paul was saying that Tony um, Tony saw the importance in things and he and he talked up the importance in things mm. and um, and they were important things that's, you know, that's how it's played out. It was all very important. Well, Steve you, Morris, from your point of view a, a, as a musician, first Joy Division, I mean, do you think the whole thing would have happened without Tony Wilson? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, Tony, um, he, he believed, he, he liked our music and he believed in us. And he, uh, you know, he was clever enough to start a record label and put out our <laughs> records. I think, <laughs> I think the great thing about Tony uh, was uh, he, he, he used to uh, put everything down to praxis in that uh, we'll just go ahead and do it and steamroll along and afterwards we'll think about why we did it in the first place. Um, you know, and it was that great sense of enthusiasm that I think um, let's put up with him for all those years. But he, 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 he was a kind of visionary entrepreneur, he was a visionary, hustler. He was, he was a hustler, he was uh, infuriating, he was poetic. Um, he, he issued people without us really knowing it, a series of challenges, you know, me as a writer, Peter as a, as a, as a designer, Richard as a television presenter, and, and somehow was manipulating the history to come to a conclusion where one of the greatest broadcasters in Britain, one of the greatest rock writers in Britain, if not the greatest of both, and one of the greatest <laughs> designers in Britain, if not the greatest, would be there to say goodbye to Tony. He's, he's, Somehow he was he, making this happen. It. He only, was managing it. He's the only friend that, that Judy and I had who would send us texts in Latin. The last text I got from Tony was in Latin because I said that, that we, we, were, we were trying to raise some money to, 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 to buy the drug that he needed to, to, uh -huh. to, to cure his, uh, his or hold his kidney cancer at bay. Um, and I said that looking at the, the, uh, the, um, <laughs> the, the praise that was being heaped upon him in, in order to get this money, he should, be, he should be elected Pope. And so I got about a two-page two text message back in, in very good Latin. He was extraordinary. He, he really was a renaissance and it, man. He was a renaissance man. It was extraordinary for this kind of character to, to, to exist within the music business. Mm -hmm. And television. Uh, and television. And a passionate believer in ideas. He had an anarchic background. I mean, he was an anarchist in the 60s, and he carried through with whatever he did. And, and the whole idea of what Tony did, in a way, was anticipate a future that at the time seemed preposterous, and somehow he willed it into being. Yeah, but you worked m most recently in Manchester yes. uh, on, on the kind of creative heart of the city, and yeah. he then went on to work in other areas in the north. Yes. I mean, he's been consulting to, to a region now calling itself Pennine Lancashire. Uh, and um, that he kind of had a real passion for. In fact, he my believed, last, yeah. last couple of days out with Tony were driving around um, the, the kind of the um, upland, upland Lancashire, looking at the, um, the kind of contrast and the contradictions in that area north of Manchester. Can I just say one thing which, which none of us have had a chance to say? He was intensely lovable. Um, I, I, I and loved, and I kind loved, of hateable, too, though. And hateable. But when you hated I mean, him, yeah, when you yeah. hated him you thought I should love him really and then when you loved him you thought I should hate I, him. I want, one of the first rows I had with Tony, one of many and, and, and Judy joined in, was uh, about the very naming of the band Joy Division which of mm -hmm. course is named after the women who mm -hmm. were used sexually by the SS. Uh, yeah, it's a controversial title um, and I sort, of <laughs> steamed, I sort of steamed in with Tony with all my Second World War histrionics. Um, he, won, <laughs> he won the argument um, but at the same time was gracious in his, in his victory. Stephen. 
I mean, you could, uh, you're absolutely right, you could have an argument with Tony and walk out hating him, <laughs> but uh, the next time you saw him, it was all forgotten. He, yeah. You know, yeah. you loved him. He was yeah. a very positive and generous man, ultimately, but, as well. So as much as he was infuriating and, and niggly and a bit bullying, you came out of it thinking, in the end, it's for good. But he also, it also seemed to me there, watching that again, that, you know, the fact that people really took the mickey out of him in Manchester, he loved that he because loved it was that. very northern and it was about embracing him the, and being allowed to be yeah. rude to him. Absolutely. The worst thing would have been kind to his yeah. face. It would, have, it would have somehow negated his energy. But he, he was pride yeah. to be he, under he, he understood. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've worked and lived in many cities in the south and in the north, and the one thing that Manchester has is a glorious chippiness. Yeah. And Tony embraced that. He embraced that and celebrated it and rewarded it and put his and, thumbs up and, to it. I mean, and the city, I mean, it's a rel relatively speaking to London, it's a small city, and the city became family. Yeah. Yeah. And just as with family, you're kind of cheeky and abrasive to one another. Exactly. And, 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 and also, exactly. along the way, he alone possibly knew that we would remember him as a great figure, but we didn't really want to say it to him at the time, <laughs> because otherwise he wouldn't have become that great figure. Well, you, here you are saying it now, and here's to Tony Wilson here's and his great chippiness. A great northerner. Great guy. Tomorrow morning's front pages. Uh, the